Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So in this particular video, I'm going to explain a very easy topic from your coordination chemistry that is spinals, right? Now, uh, this is something which was uh, like, which was not there in my YouTube videos collection. And I thought that I should also include it. And many of you have asked me to make video on this particular topic. So I'll just make a very short and very crisp video where I'll just explain all these things in very easy way. Okay. Uh, in books, if you'll go, especially the books, the standard books, which you follow for your coordination chemistry uh, are like James C. Hui and Ajay Kumar, basically what I suggest. There are many other books, but yeah, those things we, uh, which are given in the books, they are in a quite broader way, but that much whole thing you don't have to do in order to fi uh, find out this particular topic, right? So I'll tell you a very basic and very important way how to do these things. Now, before going into uh, this particular topic, I'm just considering few things that uh, you know what uh, what is a crystal lattice you know uh, what are octahedral voids and what are tetrahedral voids and you also know the uh, the difference between them right that which one is smaller and which is bigger so i'll not go into that and i'll not go into the numerical aspect of that that how many octahedral and tetrahedral vo uh, voids will be there because that is out of the scope of this particular topic if i i'll start explaining that it will take much time to explain all the basics okay so i'm just straight away coming on this particular topic all right so spinels, what are these spinels? These are basically a type of crystal uh, solids uh, which have a general formula of AB2X4, okay? Uh, where A is nothing but a divalent cation, B is a trivalent cation, okay? So B, both of them are cations. And X can be anything like your oxide, it can be sulfide, it can be fluoride, or it can be selenide. So you, as you all know that a particular crystal lattice, when it is formed, your anions make that particular lattice and cations go in the respective uh, voids, right? They, they generally occupy the voids. So based upon which void a particular, uh, a particular cation or anion is, is occupying, based upon that, we uh, call them as uh, like normal spinal or inverse spinal, okay? I'll come back to this mixed spinal later, but yeah. Normal and inverse is much important to understand. So what happens that if your A plus or your di positive cation, uh, if it goes to like if A to uh, like a, uh, this di positive cation, if it goes to your uh, tetrahedral voids and your B plus three, it goes to your octahedral void. In that case, the spinal which will be formed is called as your normal spinal. Okay. So your normal spinal is nothing but when your Di positive cation go to a tetrahedral void and tri positive cation goes to your octahedral void. In that case, we call it as normal spinal. Now, uh, what is your inverse spinal? So, in the inverse spinal, ideally it should be different, like it should be a totally opposite, right? That means B plus 3 should go to tetrahedral and A plus 2 go to octahedral, but it's quite similar, but not exactly that. So, what happens that your A plus 2 or a di positive cation. Uh, this particular thing it goes into your uh, octahedral void but your b plus 3 that means your tri positive cation it goes into both the things that means half of your tetrahedral voids and half of your octahedral void so it it uh, like since you have two moles of b so half of that mole go to the tetrahedral void and half of that goes to the octahedral void so that's what is the composition of a or inverse spine so that's how your inverse spinal is formed. So that's the basic explanation and the basic uh, definition of these two things is. Okay, now how to identify them, okay? So we generally do this with the help of CFSC. Okay, so CFSC is the best way to identify that what kind of, uh, uh, what a given particular uh, spinal will be, like what kind of spinal that will be. So to, un uh, to explain or to understand based upon CFSC, uh, there are just two things which you have to remember, not exactly two, you just have to remember one thing. And what is that? That thing is uh, that if you, let's say if the B positive, B plus three, that means the tri positive cation, uh, if the CFSC of this, CFSC of this in octahedral field, if it is greater than your di positive cation, CFSC of di positive cation, in your octahedral field in that case the the form like the formed uh, spinal over here will be called as the normal spinal okay so what is the condition for normal spinal the condition is that you just have to calculate uh, crystal field stabilization energy in the octahedral field for both for di positive cation and for tri positive cation for both 
and then you have to see if the tripositive cation has higher CFSE and uh, dipositive cation has lower CFSE in that case it is a normal spinal. Now if the reverse of that happens in that case it will be inverse spinal that means if your dipositive cation if the CFSE of that in your octahedral field if that is greater than your uh, like the CFSE of your tripositive cation in the octahedral field that is what we call it as inverse spinal. Okay, so that is called as inverse spinal. So it's very simple. Okay, you just have to memorize these two things or don't, not even memorize. When you will start doing questions now, you will get to know all these things. So just two things. You just have to, in, in fact, not two. You just have to remember one of the point and the other is the reverse of that. Okay, so just remember that if your CFSC of tripositive cation is more in the octahedral void, in that case, it is a normal spinal. That's all. Okay, that's all you have to do. Now there are certain points uh, which if you will remember that will uh, that is going to help you to solve a question very easily okay just be, uh, just without uh, doing anything you are just uh, at looking just by looking at a particular question you can easily do that. So let's take some examples to understand and later on we'll take some questions which have been asked in your exams right. So let's take some examples uh, in that particular example let's let's start with a with a comp with a spinal let's say we have fe uh, 304 okay so let's say we have fe 304 now it does not looks like a particular spinal formula right which i gave you like a b 204 so it does not looks like that but yeah you can convert that in this form you can write it in this form fe and fe 204 now it looks like that right so what does that means it means that one of this iron is present as a dipositive cation and these two iron are present as uh, sorry yeah so fe yeah so it is present as a tripositive cation okay so now what you have to do just calculate the cfses right so a dipositive cation that is a d6 system and this is a tripositive cation this is d5 system and d5 system in octahedral field this is also in octahedral field if you calculate the cfse so for d5 system i'm just doing although if you are expert in it you don't have to do that so if you calculate this, you have five uh, like electrons filled like this. So your CFSC will come out to be zero. Okay, so your CFSC will come out to be zero. And over here, if you do that, the same thing. So you have six. So yeah, so when you do it, so the CFSC values for the lower uh, or for the T2G orbital is uh, minus 0 0.4 delta o, and for this it is plus 0 0.6 delta o, right? So this is how six will be filled. So if you calculate that you will get minus 0 0.4 delta O. Now remember when the CFSC is calculated it's actually modulus of this value. So if it is minus you don't have to worry about your answer will be 0 0.4 delta O. So what we have just observed is that uh, your iron in plus 2 oxidation state or the dipositive cation of iron in octahedral field has a more value of CFSC than the iron in plus 3 in the octahedral field right. So that means what it means it clearly means uh, that uh, your compound is inverse spinal okay this is inverse spinal all right so that's how that's simple that's how simple this particular thing is so you can take any example and you can do it in the same way now in every time either you if you want you can just calculate the CFSC and then do or I'll just give you some points and with the, those particular points you can easily find out a uh, given complex whether it will be see, uh, whether that particular thing uh, will be inverse or normal spinal okay all right so there are just these four points which i have concluded based upon different examples which we have done okay so based upon that you can see that how you can easily find out that a particular complex will be what kind of spinal okay so just you just have to look upon these points and these are uh, self explanatory so i'll just read them up so the first point says that if both that is uh, dipositive cation and the tripositive cation if both of them are non-transition metals okay if both of them are non-transition metal in that case you will have a normal spinal remember that that means a spinal formed of non-transition metals will be a normal spinal always okay because uh, what uh, what the what the thing is over here which you have to remember is that the CFSC for a non-transition metal is actually zero. So we take CFSC of a non-transition metal as equal to zero. 
the next uh, point says that d3 and d8 configuration has highest cfse and they will prefer octahedral void so whenever you get a d3 or d8 either that is di positive or tri positive let's say you got a question where your a uh, like the di positive cation has a d3 configuration and uh, your b3 plus has some other configuration in that case you totally you have to see that okay this will obviously go in the in the octahedral voids and if it goes in the octahedral void then uh, you have uh, inverse spinal okay so that's how this will be done so you just have to look that uh, these two configuration if you find these two configuration in any of the configuration of any of these two cations that particular cation will go in the octahedral void okay the next says that if a2 plus that means the di positive cation is a non transition metal okay and b plus 3 that means the tri positive cation is a transition metal having all these uh, like um, any of these uh, electronic configuration now look upon this electronic configuration there is d0 missing over here d5 missing over here and d10 missing over here because all of them have zero cfse so that's why they are missing over here so if it happens that uh, you have the configurations except d0 d5 and d10 in that case the system or the or the spinal over here will be normal spinal the last point says that if if your di positive cation is a transition metal with these electronic configurations that means except d0 d5 and d10 and your tri positive cation is also your transition metal having uh, d0 d5 or d10 configuration in that case this will be inverse spinal that's what we saw in the case of your fe304 right over there one of the iron ion which was fe plus 2 uh, that was di positive cation and that was having a d6 configuration and the tri positive cation or that means fe plus 3 was having d5 configuration so we got inverse right so in that way you can solve any question based upon your uh, spinals and that is very very easy okay this type of questions now to solve these kind of questions will be very very easy for you guys so let's take up some of the examples and let's see how to do them all right so let's take some of the examples over here i have taken three examples let's try to discuss them so if you look upon the first question over here um, over here it is MgAl2O4 that means the di positive cation is magnesium in plus 2 oxidation state and the tri positive cation is aluminium in plus 3 oxidation state. Now both of these cations if you look upon both of them are non transition metals right and what I told you that if both A and B both of them are di uh, sorry if both of them are non, -transi uh, non transition metal in that case the, uh, the spinal becomes what it becomes normal spinal so this will be a normal spinal as simple as that you don't have to do anything because cfsc will be zero and when the cfscs are zero in that case we consider it to be a normal spinal if you go to the next question over here uh, now in this particular one uh, when you will do it so you have iron in plus two oxidation state and you have chromium in plus three oxidation state right so this is a d6 configuration and this will have a d3 configuration right yeah so it, it will have a d3 configuration now uh, that means when you calculate cfsc i told you that the cfsc values is highest for d3 and d8 uh, d3 and d8 right for both of them that means you don't have to worry about anything uh, you just have to look upon this that this d3 will have highest cfsc in the octahedral field so that means your cfsc of your chromium plus 3 will be greater than the CFSC of your iron plus 2 in which fields I am talking about I am talking about in the octahedral field so that means when the when the tri positive cation uh, goes in the octahedral field in the octahedral field so that kind of uh, spinals are called as your normal spinals right so this will be your this is again going to be a normal spinal now let's talk about this particular example it's it's a different example now why because if you look upon this here you have zinc in plus 2 oxidation state and iron in plus 3 oxidation state this is uh, this will have a d10 configuration and this will have a d5 configuration so bo for both of them if you calculate cfsc so cfsc is coming out to be zero for both of these uh, both these conditions so the deciding factor over here will be the size okay so when you go from left to right in a period the size decreases in that case your zinc becomes much smaller in size than iron ion right now in that particular case you can say that the smaller ion tries to goes in the smaller void or in the tetrahedral void because tetrahedral voids are smaller than the octahedral voids right so uh, that means your zinc will go in the in in your uh, tetrahedral void and your iron in plus three will go in the octahedral void so uh, if 
your tripositive cation goes in octahedral void in that case what happens that it's a normal spinal so this is again a normal spinal so it's something uh, it's a different kind of example okay and after this particular example it's very much important to understand about the mixed spinals so let's talk about mixed spinals now now this particular thing that is mixed spinal it comes into play if your cfse of both uh, your dipositive and tripositive becomes equal okay uh, that's what we saw in the last case that is where zinc and iron were there right but because of the very much size difference uh, we have considered that to be normal that is only exceptional case okay apart from that if you look upon any of your uh, any of your question like let's take example let's take mn fe 204 okay so if i give this as if i take this as a spinal over here so i will see that i have manganese in plus 2 oxidation state and i have iron in plus 3 oxidation state both of them are d5 in configuration so cfse of both of them is zero right so cfse for both of them is zero now you cannot compare them based upon cfse and the size is also quite similar okay so size is also quite comparable so in that case we cannot decide that whether it will be normal spinal or inverse spinal so some of the part remains as a normal spinal and some of them remain as the uh, in some of the portion of the crystal it remain as the inverse spinal so overall it is called as the mixed spinal okay so it's an example of your mixed spinal there are many other examples which can be taken for example i'll give you one more uh, that is let's say we have uh, we have a complex called as mg fe204 so over here if you look so instead of manganese now we have magnesium over here and this is a non transition metal so for that also we have we have cfsc value is equals to 0 for this we have iron in plus 3 so i have already calculated that cfsc for this remains 0 and since the size is also quite comparable so that's why this is again an example of your mixed spinal okay so this is as simple as that just three types of spinals normal inverse and mixed what is the formula i have explained to you how you have to identify that that also i explained uh, just you have to remember one thing that you just have to see that uh, which has more cfsc in the octahedral void if your tripositive ion has more cfsc in the octahedral void than normal spinal if dipositive ion has more cfsc in octahedral void uh, or in the octahedral field then that is a inverse spinal okay so we have taken examples we have understood that i think now we are well enough uh, we should go for questions which have been asked in the previous years of exam all right so we'll take this question uh, from your gate 2018 exam okay and it was very very simple question by far if you have understood the concept you would have done this question in just 30 seconds okay so what it says that for a inverse spinal a b 204 a and b respectively can be okay so what should be a and what should be b so we have a b 204 right and we have to find for inverse spinal so remember what was the what was the condition for inverse spinal the condition was that your a plus 2 uh, in your octahedral void your cfsc or in the octahedral field if the cfsc should be more than your b plus 3 uh, in the octahedral or in the cfsc of b plus 3 in the octahedral uh, like octahedral field right so you just have to see that in which of them your uh, plus 2 uh, the plus 2 uh, ion has more cfsc so if you if you just look upon if you just write down the electronic configuration then only you can just answer that in the first one if you look so nickel in plus 2 okay just so i'll just write down over here so nickel in plus 2 has a d8 configuration whereas gallium in plus 3 since it's a non transition metal so it will have a uh, like it will have a zero cfsc right and we know that d8 has a max cfsc we have under we have uh, i have just told told you in a point that d8 and d3 has max cfsc so that means over here you can see that the plus 2 ion has more cfsc than the plus 3 uh, or the tri positive cation so that means this is the most appropriate example where it can be inverse spinal so that should be the answer let's check the other one also just uh, just to make sure that what we have done is it correct or not so if you go with that so with for zinc plus 2 uh, we will have d10 configuration right and it has least cfsc and again if you have iron in plus 2 so here we will be having what yeah so see this is the example which we have done actually so it is d5 the one which we did right uh, based upon the size and all we did it as a, as a normal spinal right so this will be a normal spinal so this should not be the correct answer if we come back to the option number c 
we have iron in plus 2 so it has a d6 configuration and we have chromium in plus 3 so it has a d3 configuration now d3 has maximum uh, cfsc right so that means the tripositive cation will go in the cfsc right so that means this is an appropriate condition for the normal spinal not for the inverse spinal so that means what the tripositive cation has maximum cfsc right because d3 and d8 gives you maximum cfsc so d3 giving maximum cfsc so that means the tripositive cation in the octahedral field should be more than the dipositive cation so obviously the inverse of what we need right so that means this option is also wrong or not needed if you go with option number d over here we have manganese in plus 2 oxidation state will uh, which will give us d5 that means our cfsc over here will be zero right so cfsc is coming out to be zero and if i talk about manganese in plus three so that will be d4 and it will have certain value of cfsc right so it will have some uh, like i'm not going to calculate but it will have some value so that means the tripositive cation will have higher value than zero right obviously it will have a value higher than zero so that means the tripositive cation will go in the octahedral void and dipositive cation will be smaller than that right so this is the condition where the cfsc of your mn plus 3 is going to be more than mn plus 2 so this is the condition for a normal spinal so that's how option number d can also be cancelled out so see how simple is it and this question while just looking at it you you could have done you don't have to calculate also it's as simple as that right so i'll just take one more example i'll just explain you that and then uh, will i'll be giving you some questions to solve from the previous years of gate exam all right now this particular question over here if you look this was asked in your gate 2004 exam and it was again from the same topic that is from the spinals and what it says is the spinal is given to you that is cofe204 and you have fe fe204 respectively are okay so what are these spinals actually so let's write it down so we have cofe204 in this case we have cobalt in plus 2 oxidation state and we have iron in plus 3 oxidation state right so cobalt in plus 2 oxidation state that means this has a d7 uh, configuration and fe plus 3 actually this will be d5 in configuration so the cfsc directly you can do cfsc value for this will be zero and this value will not be equal to zero it will have some finite value right so that means for plus 2 uh, or or yeah so that means this cobalt in plus 2 oxidation state it has a ability or it has a property that it will go into the octahedral void because it has certain value which will be not equal to zero or i should say that actually this will be greater than zero right so it will be for d7 you can calculate if you want you can just calculate that so it will come out to be one two three four five six and seven so if you calculate this will come out to be minus 0 0.8 delta o or in the modulus form it will come out 0 0.8 delta o. so it will it is actually more than that right so that means your co in plus two will go in the in the octahedral void or in the octahedral field the cfsc is more than the uh, tripositive cation right so in the um yeah so in the octahedral and cfsc of that is smaller so that means when the dipositive cation goes to the octahedral void this is the condition for inverse spinal so this comes out to be inverse so the first one is inverse now your option number uh, c and d you can just cancel them up now looking upon the second option we have already solved this but yeah if you want to check it once again you can do that of your own so we have iron in plus 2 oxidation state and iron in plus 3 oxidation state this is d5 this is going to give you 0 cfsc uh, this is d6 and this is going to give us 0 0.4 delta o so obviously this is more than this so again the same condition okay and we have done this question in the previous example so again coming to this particular thing this is also going to be inverse so what will be the answer answer will be inverse and inverse so both of these complexes or both of these spinals will be inverse spinal so it's, it's as simple as that and it's it's very very simple concept okay so i hope you have understood the concept well and i hope now you'll be able to solve questions based upon this thing so i'll be i'll be giving you two questions at uh, now um, and i just hope that you guys will be able to solve that and you'll be answering me uh, for the, those questions in the comment section below okay so let me just give up those questions all right so these are the two questions uh, which you guys have to solve and uh, both of them were asked in your gate exam one was asked in gate 2008 exam and the other one was in gate 2014 exam the this will i will mark it as question number one and this is as the question number two 
uh, now this is for your evaluation okay you have to think about it and you have to answer in the first one it says that uh, among the compounds these are the three spinels given to you which are normal and which are inverse so based upon that it is and for the second one it's like uh, it's a complex given to you mncr204 and it has been asked that what will what kind of spinal it will be and also the cfsc and if you see the cfsc is asked in your dq okay but we have we have calculated all the cfsc in delta o, okay so let's say if if your cfsc comes out to be anything let's say if it comes out to be 15 delta o then if you just multiply this with 10 so in that way uh, what you will get is the answer in dq okay so you can just convert this uh, cfsc from delta o to dq just by multiplying it with uh, sorry if you get 1.5 then you will multiply and it will get 15 dq okay so that's how this will be done so i hope this you guys will be able to do and i'll be waiting for your uh like answers in the comment sections below okay so that's all for this particular video guys i hope this was informative you guys understood this concept well if you guys have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section below i'll try to reply you guys over there and uh, that's all thank you so much for watching the video and if you are new to this channel do subscribe to the channel and if you like this particular video do give it a like right and that's all thank you so much for watching have a great day bye bye